Good evening, good evening, sound check. Hi, Annie. Hi, Pumzi, how are you? Good, thank you. Good evening, everyone. Sorry we are late. Oh my God, I just have to wrap around my head the new time change here. I was thinking it's 21 hours in Zambia, but it's actually 22 hours. So apologies, apologies. Mama, Mama Tipa, you can greet the viewers while I share. Thank you. Indeed, indeed. Uh, apologies to the viewers and the listeners. You know, um, we know most of you are um, just getting ready to go to bed because of your work schedules. So we are really sorry um, that uh, the program has had to start at this time. Mama Pumulo also has been busy with meetings. And so remember that there's a huge time difference between uh, uh, Zambia and the United States. So for them, it's daytime there and they have to attend to their job schedules. So once again, sincere apologies. All the same greetings. Greetings to you, Mudibwanji, Mudishani, Mudingai, Mutozichwani, Mwadibi uh, Yabuti, and, and um, we hope uh, you will enjoy the subject that we have today. A lot has been happening in Zambia, so we thought of just coming on as usual to add our two cents, just our two cents, that's what we come to, uh, to add here. A lot has happened, and today, I was feeling very, uh, you know, so wary and disappointed with the happenings of Zambia and thinking honestly, um, the UPND, how could you really kill the dream of the man himself who created the party and Mama Pumulo because of that, in remembrance to a great man called Anderson Gambele Mazoka, I decided to wear his t-shirt today and uh, because i really respected this man i voted for him um when he stood uh, as a president because i believed in him unfortunately his vision was stolen and his votes were stolen he was a force to reckon with and i think had he been uh, alive he would have contributed immensely to the development of this nation. So welcome uh, once again, uh, viewers and listeners. Thank you, Mama. Uh, for those opening remarks, uh, share guys, hashtag somebody and share. Hashtag mm -hmm. a friend and share. Share in your groups, WhatsApp groups, you know. We need to talk, you know. Um, our democracy is being stolen with impunity from right under our feet or our nose and uh, I just want to implore every Zambian to rise up with their voice and speak for the democracy that uh, was fought for 59 years ago we are going on to 60 years but we have we are going backwards. We are going in reverse. It's really sad, guys. It's really sad. Feel free to join in. I think today is a day where we are all going to open up and pour, pour our hearts out. So feel free to join. The topic is just the, the impeachment of Nelly Muti, the suspension of uh, the 16 members of parliament, and everything that is going on in the country. A lot has been said already, and um, actually we should have a peaceful protest on our, so on our social media pages. That is what I'm asking. If you're a well-meaning Zambian, let us protest peacefully for this uh, dictatorship that is taking root. Uh, I blame this entirely on uh, on uh, the president himself, because he is the one who appointed the, he handpicked Nelly Muti. Nelly Muti was, was not elected. She, she was handpicked, and then she went through in parliament as an opposed. So, 
I'm sure there are other people who wanted uh, to be considered for the role of the speaker. But uh, the fact that uh, Nelly Muti was appointed, handpicked, and, and then went through as an as unopposed is something we should all be questioning now. Because according to the Constitution, a speaker is supposed to be elected. Welcome, Mama. Pocheni Yama, Namwa Iseni. Eya mkwai, mwapole nipo mkwai, ichunglo po mkwai wonse. Na tuishwa kwe na chunglo sana. Wantu wale fwa yoku tusha. Lelo, ichalo chesu icha Zambia. Na mwona na chikaba. Ichalo nga chakaba. Wantu wala fi mwokula lo tulo. Echo mwamwe na kanchi. Na wanensu wali muda ya spora. Pamula nduwa kusaka mano kukaramba. Nga nshiba kuinipumulo stumbe koba hivyo kutila no. Ififile tika mchalo cha Zambia na efuenga wana mayo. Ukubanga wa fiash bacha mweo chonse. Ukubanga wa nina nkoko chifukatiri ya wana mapindo. Ukubanga wa mabutala ya pamunchi. Na efuwe tufile tulelanda kwa ukufile tika mchalo cha Zambia. Kwa nshiba na mayo na wema paswe ka. Kwa nshiba na mayo na wema paswe ka. Kwa nshiba na mayo na wema paswe ka. Kwa nshiba na wema matipa. 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 Kwa nshiba na Ndeche tikera wantu wonse tawale ele, tiye ni tufu ile chapa mo, ilili ya shile chika mchalo chesu cha Zambia. Mchalo cha Zambia, muli chimfulu mfulu. Mwaise nipo mkwai wonse. Ea mkwai, natote la mkwai. Ea mkwai. So, ilia shigira lelo, mwema viewers, we are talking about the impeachment of Nelly Muti, and then the suspension of the members of parliament. And the events, we are talking about this whole thing, it all started with, the Mulungushi Gate, you know? It all started with Mao Sampa and the Mulungushi Gate up to, 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 lead it, to lead us to the current happenings today. So we know that there's a lot of speculation, a lot of, uh, you know, articles have been written and people are saying that UPND picked a weaker link to orchestrate they are the democratic dictatorship and democratic takeover of the house. So Miles Sampa was picked as a weaker link. And whatever I'm saying here is uh, on social media, people are discussing these things. There is also people saying that in my opinion, uh, Whatever his name was paid, the one billion, I don't know if it is the one billion kwacha or one billion US dollars, I don't know. But say, uh, you know, this is what we are saying. You are going to sell, to sell the country. You are going to sell a whole organization for a few pieces of silver. Uh, silver. It is so sad. It is really Really, really sad for Zambians to continue in a mode of corruption of being bought. It, it reminds me even how in our, our history as African started by our ancestors selling us into slavery. And this is the curse of Africa. This is the curse of Africa, which I'm appealing to youths to break it because it started long time ago, many centuries ago, our ancestors sold their own people into slavery by accepting a few pieces of silver. Some of them who sold Africans into slavery, they didn't even receive anything. They were just promised. These chiefs who were selling their own villagers into slavery, they were not even given a cobble. They were just promised. Baba pela ma suit, ma jacket, baba letela ma whatever they were bringing them, and they were promised to say, when you give us so many slaves, we are going to bring you so much. We are going to bring you guns. We are going to do this. It is sad that Africa is still embroiled in that curse of selling their own people. Now we are not being sold into slavery, but they are, they, you are selling each other out. Our leaders are selling each other out 
for few for few pieces of silver. Our leaders are selling each other out and signing secret MOUs to sell out our land to foreigners. It is a shame. Today, when I woke up, I saw a list of, I think it's the 20 fastest growing countries in Africa, and Zambia was not one of them. We are in the Champions League. A country like Rwanda, who had a genocide, is among the top 10 fastest growing economies in Africa. A country like Uganda. They had a genocide in my lifetime. Tanzania is also among the 10 top growing economies in the, in the world. Not only in Africa, in the world. But yeah. they have turned things around. They have turned things around. While people, countries in Africa, are turning things to improve their economies, what are we doing? And for me, the shameful part is the youths. Even when we youths, we have a poverty, shamelessly. And you have no pride, you have no self respect. The same youths who are lying to say, you need two thirds to impeach a speaker when you only need one third. It's there in black and white in the in the constitution. And the people who are telling you the truth, you are you are telling them they are propaganda. You are a propagandist. This new Sudan government it has swamped social media space with follow with the followers who are spreading lies like they did to us. And we were so naive in 2021 and believed the lies of, P, of, of UPND. A good lie, three good lies this week. Three good lies this, this week. They lied about Mao Sampa meeting, meeting the US ambassador. They are lying that the, the price of minimum is reducing to 189, when the 189 is the price of a 20 kg. They are lying that. Uh, that it is two thirds to impeach a speaker when it is one third. And now we saw how the speaker Vanelli Muti pulled the first one to impeach, to, re, to suspend uh, members of parliament when she's supposed to be impeached. A politics of treachery, politics of ruling the country with impunity. And I um, will end just now, and I'm ending by saying, Baneli Muti is 68 years old. So, so we have three years to go. So when she is 72 plus, she is going to go, go to jail. I want Baneli Muti to think twice, because right now, Baneli Muti, she should have retired three years ago. She has no business being in that, in that house, being a speaker and causing confusion. She has no business doing that. But she is a speaker at 68, and she is not bringing any wisdom to the floor of the parliament, so she needs to be impeached. And if she forces her stay in the parliament, it will mean that three years from now, Nelly Muti is going to jail. And my question to Nelly Muti is, why Nelly Muti? You, your retirement is overdue. You also have the case of Nelly Mutu with your family. All this information I'm sharing is on public media. But Nelly Mutu, her own family took her to court for a family a property inheritance issue. And now Nelly Mutu has been abrogating the powers of the constitution without impunity. And Bahaka Inde is the one issuing the orders. Because if Bahaka Inde was not issuing the orders, he will remove her. He would have told the, 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 the speaker not to suspend the members of parliament. So, Muti, it will be too bad for you in your retirement years to be in a jail cell somewhere. Then, Nelly Muti, think of your life. Think of your future. Do not be used by 
politicians, greedy politicians who have an agenda to sell out Zambia. But Nelly Muti, you are a woman. You are a mother. You are a lawyer. On top of everything else, you are Nelly Muti at that position because of her, her qualifications, so to say, as a lawyer. Now we are questioning her qualifications. But Raneli Muti, think twice. Think about your future. You do not want to spend your final years in jail instead of enjoying your grandchildren and the money you have worked hard for. I end here. Mama, you can come in. All over Matipa, all over Mary, you can come in. Mama Maria, I think you can come in. Uh, in one of our local languages. Mama Matipa, uh, okay, no problem. I, 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 I will come in, Mama Maria. I, I will let, let me come in. You know, I also would just like to add on on uh, uh, the speaker's uh, behavior. And uh, you know, the, the role of, of parliamentarians one is first I would like to, to acknowledge the presence of Honorable Harry Kalaba watching. Thank you so much, sir. We appreciate your, your presence on our page and we are humbled. Thank you. Welcome to President uh, Harry, um, Harry Kalaba. We value your, your, your time on this show. Thank you. You know, I would uh, also like to concur with um, Nelly Muti's behavior in parliament. You know, the role of, a parliament, of parliamentarians is to lobby for development, to legislate, and the, you know, to respect the constitution the, the speaker needs to respect the constitution the speaker needs to adhere to the tenets of democracy and so she needs to be fair and biased just as well as be impartial these are mandatory obligations and she's not supposed to depart from them her allegiance is her allegiance is not to a political party but that put her in office, but to the people of Zambia. That's where her allegiance should be, not to that political party that, that put her there. But, you know, it is a fact that she has been sponsored by a certain political party, we all know, but when elected to, 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 to parliament, which she was not even elected, she's expected to shift her allegiance to the constitution and apply justice equally and impartially that is what vanelli moti is supposed to do i was privileged yesterday i actually i went to parliament because i needed to see this for myself and hear it from for myself you see parliamentarians are there to legislate government's duty is to provide development to the citizens and parliamentarians should hold the government accountable. There shouldn't be a battle between UPND and PF because we equally have independent uh, members of parliament in that house. The constitution is very clear on how a leader of opposition is supposed to be put in office. MPs shall elect uh, and the speaker need not impose on that. It is very clear. So the same constitution she she has applied to um, suspend these members of parliament is the same constitution she has raped. So you wonder, it's a, 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 a question of chua miragalu kuluma mbuzi, but also timbuzi kuluma galu. And you know, MP Kangombe was sent out of parliament for merely protesting when he was curtailed to speak by Madame Nelly Muti. You know, a matter 
matter of urgent public importance, you know, and then she asked him, you know, on which standing order are you, are you standing? You know, sit down, because I know exactly what you're going to say, what you're going to say. <laughs> standing order number 134, she claims for a matter to stand, it must affect the majority. This is not di uh, dictated in the standing order book. So where does Nelly Muti get that from? MPs, uh, you, want, you want to curtail the MPs because of the excess power that you have. You know, vo uh, and so the MPs now, you make them feel demoralized because the MPs did not find themselves there in that house by chance. They worked at it. They worked at it. Nelly Muti claims members of parliament that stood up in solidarity with Christopher Kangombe incited him to refuse to walk out. Christopher Kangombe is an adult. He knows the repercussions of disobeying parliament. You know? Yet, this was not even the case. Rules of parliament are very clear. Clear, You know, it allows members to protest when they notice an unfairness from the speaker. Fine, the pro protesting is to walk out. But surely, Kangombe stood for, for himself, you know? And now M MPs in that house, they want to attack the opposition and independent MPs in full view of the speaker. And they go unpunished. We have watched that several times. Whenever I watch parliament, she's, Nelly Muti is biased. You know, a point of order on a matter is raised on the very day of the occurrence. But usually this is, this is ignored by the speaker. Rules need to be applied fairly in that house. We all see the injustices that are happening in that house, you know? MPs need to be respected. At the, at the same time, you know, the same respect that the speaker is asking from the MPs. You find now in the house, uh, this MP for Chiengi, whenever she stands up to speak, she is called Elenshina. Honestly, you can start calling somebody Elenshina, and Nelly Muti has said nothing about it. She has said nothing. She has ignored it. So you can see her biasness in, in, uh, in, in Parliament. It is not right. The Zambian people are watching. And they are seeing all this. And this just brings me back to what uh, I was following um, uh, John Sangwa on his interview on uh, Phoenix FM. Sangwa, being a constitutional lawyer, uh, said he has actually been approached twice to join this government. And he says he cannot work with this government because it does not respect the constitution. Public service lack proper system. So joining this current government will be like moving into a piggery. I said, oh my God, you couldn't have said it any better. We have very educated Zambians in this country. And most of them do not want to work with such governments because they know that the systems are just, are, are just uh, you know, they're not right. They favor the incumbent government, the, the government of the day. And so when you want to do the right thing, you are curtailed. That is where African politicians have it from. You are there to serve the Zambians that put you in office. And so you start derailing and you want to do your own thing. I have said it so many times on this program. Majority of people who also vote are those that don't talk. They sit on the fence and they are watching you, but they know that their strength lies in that ballot box. That is where their strength lies. 
Do not be cheated with numbers that come to hear you, to hear you at your rallies. And you think everybody that attends your rallies is with you or likes you. Uh-uh. They want to hear what you have to say for them to make an informed decision whether they should be behind you and support you. So usually African leaders, when they see a large following, they think, oh, they are very popular. It is not the case. We have intellectuals who are seated there running their businesses. And when they see that their businesses are being affected because of a wrong government that, the, you know, that we have put in place, they will think twice whether to put their thumb on you or give you the boots. I have said it before that UPND, if you do not pull up your socks in these two years that are remaining you will regret ever existing i'm telling you you will regret ever existing and you know when if somebody comes uh, on social media and say you people should be grateful today that uh, this government has given you freedom of speech it is long overdue other developing countries have done that time immemorial. There is nothing, nothing new about it. It is, you know, long overdue. Yes, Mama Pomulo. Uh, a correction there. The praise singers want to think UPND gave us freedom of speech. They did not. Me, I spoke against UPND, and the PF never clamped my page. You, you, you. Know? you spoke against uh, pf yes i spoke and against then, pf yes. and we were yes. free to talk in pf yes and yes. Uh, under pf our pages were not clamped yeah but this upnd they are clamping pages and they have they have keyboard gangsters insulting people on pages and so when you see Nelly Muti starting to threaten members of parliament, because I have seen it, I have seen it. You know, when she says, I will name you, you want me to name you. That is a threat, Nelly Muti. That is, you are threatening the people that are respected in their constituencies. You were just put on that seat. Nobody voted for you. You had it easy to go and sit where you are right now. Let's take you to a constituency and see which constituency you are going to amass votes from. And so those people need to be respected because they are accountable to the people that put them on those seats. But now you have decided to treat them like little, little children. That house had, has degenerated to a nursery school. Even the visitors that have attended that parliament attested to that fact that they have never seen a speaker who speaks so much more than the members of parliament. And so sometime learn to sit back and give a thought to what you are doing and ask your conscience is what i'm doing the right thing or not because this will come back to haunt you it will come back to haunt you yes we have had speakers before who have expelled members of parliament for 30 days but Look at the history of this parliament. If you remember, Mama Pomulo, while PF was in power, if you watched the videos of Gary Combo in opposition, he spoke with a lot of authority, with a lot of pomp, sometimes with hands in his pocket. He was never curtailed. Do you think anybody can, can talk the way Garin Combo used to speak in parliament? Hell no, it will not happen. Even the same way Avena Cornelius Mwitwa. Vajak Kumuimbu Vadiavale Fokta, Vale Fokta, retire Muma Pali Mu Parliament. Vale Fokotela Mu Parliament. Honestly, 
we don't have men and women who can also replace those people who come and tell us and argue on on laws of 19 fendera where when you speak you make a point but when you you rape the constitution, the highest order of a country, it becomes a shame, a real shame. And a crime. Because you, you will need, and a cry, you will need that constitution one day. You may not need it today, but one day you will need it. Because it applies to each and every Zambian. Exactly. And you know, Anik, where they are saying, so imagine how who is violating the constitution. Exactly. She is going to go in without bail, you know? And well, um, they said, Mama Pumulo, without bail as a second offender. When you are a first offender, it doesn't uh, matter, my dear. In the weather, first or second, in home, people who have killed people, I have received inbox messages to say some people who killed people, they are free. This government have let people free who are murderers, killing human beings. Now, just stealing a cow, it is hypocrisy and it, it is. is abrogation of the law and it is impunity. It is dis disrespectful to human life. Yeah. That is very that is very true. It's disrespectful to human life. You can't have murderers walking free and umuntuwa ibengombe. Whether it's second, third, or fourth offense. Yeah. Killing a cow cannot be more, more have serious consequences than murderers who are walking the streets. They have been released by this same government. Yeah. And 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 also why a cow? Why a cow? Why Which is not a property? Yes. So even stealing in a supermarket, if you are a second offender, why not make it unbailable? I don't understand the reason yes. of why a cow, stealing a cow a as a private property offender should yes. not and be uh, available. Huh? So before we continue, I'd just like to play this audio because I think this, this audio has summarized everything we are trying to say. I think I've listened to a lot of audios, but this gentleman said it best. Good evening, countrymen and women. My name is Prince Chanda, aka Handliner. I wish to make a comment on the happenings in the country today. Mm -hmm. I have noticed with this man that we are taking the peace of this country with impunity and sheer insensitivity. This has to come to an end. I want to address a number of individuals in this recording and I want it to be put on record that they were ably advised and cautioned to be patriots to the country, to love their country, and to cherish the peace and do everything in their powers to preserve it. Number one is President Akai Deitrema. Mr. President, sir, the legitimacy of your presidency is only to the fact that you adhere to what you swore at the Hero Stadium. You swore to uphold, defend, and protect the constitution of the of the land. That is what, what gave you legitimacy. If while in the stadium, you decline to make that oath before the masses and the world, the very national intelligence would have de declined you to become president of this country. But as a rule, like every other that person that takes on to be president of this country make that same oath before the masses. The constitution is the people. When you swear to protect, defend, and uphold the constitution, you are saying you protect, defend, and uphold the well-being of the people. Mr. President, you are the seventh president. 
this country has been peaceful since independence. 59 years now, you have been in, in the state house or you have been in community house for two years. Meaning, for 57 years before you were president, this country has been in peace. This country has seen presidents come and go. This country is the constitutional democracy. This is why you are in power from the opposition. The anarchy you are promoting, the anarchy you are promoting, Mr. President, every security agent that understands their mandate must be on your door every day to knock on your door to tell you, Mr. President, you are going astray. Mr. President, we are not asking you to uphold, defend and protect the constitution of the land. You swore to do so. That is where legitimacy is. The moment you disregard the constitution that you swore to uphold, defend and protect, you lose your legitimacy. And every person that understands that oath that you made, who, who takes illegal instructions from you, commits a crime together with you. You are not going to allow anarchy in Zambia police to start supporting criminal behavior. You are not, not going to allow anarchy in parliament for that woman who is in parliament to start creating anarchy in that house. You cast get your members cast get it, but even you, you called him a partisan person. Now we are able to see what is happening in parliament. We are not going to allow you to create anarchy in the Ministry of Justice and the judiciary. Your Minister of Justice, who is a lawyer, has a mandate to guide you and everyone under that ministry to respect the former president of this country who still enjoys his immunity. You called him out to state his position and he has come out and stated his position. Him losing the benefits because he wants to be active in politics has no bearing to his immunity. This is basic. This is too basic for Mlamwaimbe, the Minister of Justice, to understand. Nelly Muti is a lawyer. Jack Mwimbu is a lawyer. Mwambaimbe is a lawyer. These lawyers must understand that whatever they do to state the peace of this country would come back to, to them in many folds. Jack Mwimbu, you are a home affairs minister and in charge of interior security. Do you really, really understand, sir? what it means when you are told you are in charge of interior security, internal security. Do you really understand, sir, as a lawyer? Do you really understand the role of the police in the country, Mr. Jack Mwimbu? Mr. Jack Mwimbu, not too long ago, when the PF lost power, at your instruction and the, the police command, you bundled Kampiongo, former minister of home affairs, in the very office where you are, who was not even a lawyer, and you drove him in the night to Shuangandu and the incarcerated him in police custody. But Jackie Mwimbu, Vamdala, you are old enough to survive what Tampio was surviving. Please, use your position to protect the security of this country. You are not there to protect UPND to do wrong things. You are not there to do that. We have heard UPND the cadres threatening to go and beat the pre former president because he had decided to come out that he wants to do politics. The man that is enjoying his immunity in a democracy, which is a constitutional democracy, whereby your president you appointed authority, your appointing authority, swore before the Zambian people and the world, the whole world, by Jackie Mwimbo. The behavior of Mao Sampa is illegal and that's criminal. The convention Mao Sampa had is criminal, is illegal, and that means it's criminal to be tolerated. He's right when he was attending to the interview to say the PF doesn't have structures because the, the structures, their mandate expired. Very good.
That is why PF has dared to have the convention. Because the constitution makes it very clear that, first of all, the intra-party election should be held to have the delegates who are legitimate to go and vote for a president. And the National Council should be pres present. So he has done it very well to say, yes, they are mandated. PF does have such as the mandate ended. So who voted for him? The UPND candidates? The position of registrar of society is solid. If out of pressure, she has sent the names at that institution and she chooses not to resign, she will face consequences on her own. But Jack Mwimbo, if you want to destroy PF, be smart. I've seen this frivolous claim by a lot of idiots, you know, idiots who've just been to school are not educated. I've listened to them say, this is what Sata did to MMD. That is wrong, countrymen and women. Sata was smart. If Sata wanted UP, UP, MMD to be divided, he never sent the PF cadres to go and vote for Mutat or anybody else against Nevas Mumba. The party itself divided itself, and they went according to the constitution to elect whoever they wanted. Sata appointed people from MMD to weaken it, if that is what he did. Sata was smart. He must not be insulted in his grave as though well, well, he wasn't wise. In the end of the day, we have to you PND. The smart. The peace of the country is more important than anything else. But Jack Mwim, in case you don't know, now I'll tell you. And you, when you wake up tomorrow, go and find out. The police in the country are less than 19,000 in this entire country. The Zambia police officers are that today they are less than 19,000. We were in power at Jackie Moon. The Zambian population is 20 million plus. But Jackie Moon, the police, the Tibach Teando, Ama citizens, the Mwakonka Nyapo, Ugu Bakalifia. And I had the Galum one Nika Teka for seven years. Why am I buying a penny? I'm laying you for to my Equatia, Nenu, my Gupawa, America, Mwalina. What about the person? was in power and I mean about Kwatawa now everywhere. In behavior, but Jack Mumbu Mwamu Kulikela police were at Sita. He can look at you, Chalo. And when you Chalo and Dala Mule Sokona Pau Mibuenu as a home affairs minister, Umuneno Kampi and Umu and Mulonga Mushkuma Mujom to Aksua and Dwam Dala. Please, I beg you in the name of God and I beg you in the name of patriotism. Love your country. Mr. President Daka in the is not immortal, he's a mortal man, he's not a god, he's a human being. Okay, I, I think we have heard enough from there. Very important uh, takeaways from that uh, audio. Um, for me, the key thing that I want us to, to take away from that audio is the fact that, uh, fact that uh, can you mute uh, my Can brother? you mute uh, my brother? Can you mute your phone? Yes, Can you mute your phone? And okay, let me do that. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. So the key so the key away. thing to take away. She telling you she telling you channel as well. echo. Yes. So the key thing to take away is that um the speaker nailed, brought an important fact out to say President Hichilema's presidency is a subject to him adhering to the constitution. He took an oath in the Hero Stadium, there where the president was, where he received the instrument of power. But President Hichilema stood in front of the whole world. And he took an oath to protect the Zambian constitution. And the same thing the president does when he's appointing people. They go there at the state house, and all the ministers and government officials, they take an oath, the swearing in ceremony. The president has had his swearing in ceremony at the Euro Stadium. And now, Instead of the president protecting the constitution, he is there. I don't know if he is the one directing Nelly Muti and all these institutions to violate our constitution. It is going to be a bad ending for the president. 
I'm just going to, I'm just saying, because there are consequences. There are consequences to everything that is going on. But in the Zambia is not a public, is not a banana republic. Mm -hmm. Zambia is a country, a sovereign country, democratic country. You didn't bring us democracy. The democracy we enjoy started many years ago. Even during the colonial days, there was democracy. Because had they been not been democracy, the KK and the freedom fighters would not have been able to get uh, independence from the Brits, from the British. So Bahaka in the reevaluate yourself before it's too late. And I am happy that people are coming out and talking about all these injustices, the blatant lies, the shameless and apologetic violation of our constitution. You can imagine if they can treat lawmakers like that, people who are appointed, you should all be upset. I think all, all, all voters should be upset that their lawmakers have been suspended by a speaker who is illegal herself. No one voted for her. Like, like people are saying now we are sounding like a broken record. But Nelly Muti, your job is to be a, like a referee, Mubola. This one said it best. The job of a speaker is like a referee in a football match. It's not that now in a, in a, in a parliament, Muria, but Nelly Muti has become the main player, one man show. There's no such thing, even in our entertainment world. If it's tennis, it's one on one. You can't have a, a, a game where one person is playing against two, three people, 50 people, and you want to be, you know. Murefi and you are violating the law to get your way. For what? For what, really? You know? And, and we have to keep talking. Zambia is the time. Barumendo Bakashana, ladies and gentlemen, stand up and speak for your democracy. We, I personally would not be talking here if I saw Zambia's name on that list for the top uh, 20 growing economies in the world. If Zambia's name was there, Palestine, if Zambia's name was on that list, I won't be talking because I would know that if this kind country is headed in the right direction now this country economically look at what is happening the dollar is at 23 one u.s dollar to 21 you know we are in problems mm -hmm. we are in problems they have failed they have failed even to contain the kwacha they have failed even the zesco tariffs have gone up secretly they have increased the for tariffs secretly and they are also smuggling we have been reliably informed that high-ranking government officials are smuggling mini meal to congo and when those trucks are caught at the border there this official the madame the truck drivers call this official she's a woman the owner of these trucks is a woman she is smuggling mini meal into Congo, and when they catch those trucks, uh, uh, apparently it's a woman in cabinet. Really? Yeah. And when ZRA or uh, ZNS approach uh, the same person, uh, they she says she will get them fired by saying they are PF sympathizers, and they they will go just like that. And this is the same problem we are having. Even when we talk here, we are PF sympathizers. Yeah. What makes you think, Baba, UPND? What all of us are UPND? Uh, PF, sorry. Yeah. What makes you think that the entire country is PF? Exactly. And if PF was committed in crime. Why should you commit the same crimes? Mama, Nick, the you know, floor is yours. You, you know, uh, I, I, I was privileged to watch. Um, an interview of uh, Nixon Chilangwa, who is a PF uh, MP for Kawambwa on Diamond TV today. 
And I must say, honestly, uh, Honorable Nixon Chilangwa, if you are watching, you need to tone down on your arrogance. Really, PF, I said this is what cost you an election. This is what booted you out in the first place. I watched you. I watched the entire interview. Calling interviewers Iwe. I'm still talking. Iwe. Just listen. I'm still talking. I said, oh my Lord. I thought these people had changed. That arrogance and pomposity that you exhibited on that interview today, really, you have to think twice. If you think you're going to come back, PF, with that arrogance, zero. The interviewer asked him, where are the 200,000 the presidential aspirants paid? For, you know, in advance, in the hope of PF holding a convention. And uh, Honorable Chilangwa, your response was really below par. You went on and bubbled and said the PF has a budget, they use X, Y, Z money per year. And I said, uh uh, uh uh, Honorable Chilangwa. The question is those 200,000 kwachas that those presidential aspirants paid, they did that because it was for a purpose. It was for a purpose. And so you can't be so indisciplined and swallow all that money. So, so think twice. People like also Mao Sampa that paid you see, that's why now they are even behaving like junkies. Huh? And so, you need to tone down. Otherwise, really, if you're not going to change seriously, PF, it's a no-no. I'm just being very honest and sincere with you. It is a no-no. It has suddenly become a crime for any Zambian to become rich in, in, in this country. Silencing people. Then they freeze your bank account, they start following you. Where did they get this money? Where did they? Are we under a police state? Even people who are not anywhere aligned to politics, but they won't be laughing. HH came on the promise that they, you know he will acknowledge people that work hard. And when we say Murichpo we Muzambia, people tell us Bombeni. Now it's not the case. So you want us to go back into the colonial days where now people should be keeping money in their mattresses. Honestly. It's a crime to have money in your account I am, I, by me saying this, I know during Kaunda, we had what we called OP, Office of the President, and these people used to investigate certain individuals before they come to you. They would investigate how is this person making their money and so on and so forth. But now, even just genuine money, Zambians are being frustrated, yet they are being told kubereka. Is it a sin to have one million kwacha in an account? Is it a sin if you work at it? It is not a sin. For as long as that person pays their taxes, it is 
okay. But, but you only want a certain individual to be rich. I've said it on this program, I don't even think he's rich. Because if he was rich, he would have declared his assets. Maybe, we know about all the deals that are happening in KCM. Huh? You know, Vandata has not lived up to its obligations before taking that KCM. We know about those deals. The Suji light that is moving at night, we know about all those deals. You yourselves by UPND, your hands are not clean. And the sooner you change, the better. Because Zambians are great disciplinarians. They will discipline you, and they do it calmly. Zambians are very, very calm, and they will do it calmly. They will just discipline you. So if you not me, and therefore we can shop. Nga moya kumarali zienu. Mwira mona tibari abonse abantu abe shire muku ufefi umrefo kulanda wakami vote la. Vambi be safiye umrandu wachi mpuena. Huh? And be very far from Foko can message if you're Murelan. Ah, then be the pain if you were quite a fiacuchita. Can they ambo our Nelanda Chapwa? But the real voters now they call among my and they are over them, Mona, because you are affecting their businesses with your policies. And so you. You are frustrating them. You know, I said, um, you know, frustration is due to unfulfilled desires. The desire to eat well, the desire to live well, the desire to a good education. And progress is what Zambians want. They want to see progress in their lives. They want a brighter future. And they want to live. They want to live it. They are, they are not going to say progress, nganaya. No, Zambians want to leave that progress. They don't want to be the only people suffering because I am working hard because of my children. When are you going to leave that progress? So we need to see better schools in the country. We need good access to medication. We need good roads because those roads bring about development. And that's what people need. We need when you dish out CDF, you do not come on public podiums and start boasting about how much CDF you have issued because that is not your money. That money belongs to the people of Zambia. So stop boasting about it. You are just implementing what the Zambians need. Mama Pumulo Mkwaina Pela, for now, let's allow our visitor Our comrade to, to come in. Yeah. Our welcome comrades. I'll give you the floor a little bit. I just want to hammer on the point that uh, the, the, the fastest growing economies in Africa, there are 20 around the world, and Zambia is not one of them. And this is very hurtful because even countries like Burundi are on that list. In, in uh, Benin is on that list. Ethiopia, Rwanda, Libya, Niger. And Zambia is much richer than all these countries. That is, economies are growing. And I want to to tell you, praise singer Mweba Leland, that he, Haka Inde is working, he has employed the teachers, nurses, you know, the defense. Those people are a liability. Yeah. They are a liability to the economy. They don't grow the economy. That's why, you know, but you see the taxes are going higher in the country because they have given tax holidays and they are enabling looting of the resources. But later yeah. is another form of looting. You know, when right. they make these MOUs and get 3%, it means they are shrinking the economy. When they are selling these private mines to a private people, individuals, they are shrinking the economy. So until 
we see that these mines come under some sort of national mining organization, ZCCM, we start bringing money into Bank of Zambia. Ladies and gentlemen, we will continue to see the kwacha free falling. Kwacha is mm -hmm. about $50. Oh, because now yes. we are even in a party 50 kwacha, I mean. Yeah. I mean, yeah. to one US dollar. Because now, even the basic thing as Ubunga, we are importing. So, can you imagine the impact that has on our economy? Because everyone eats milli meal, they are all spending money on milli meal. So, it means if they buy Ubunga one shop right, their money is being externalized. At least when we had our own milli meal. If, if you are buying local mini meal, she didn't pay, she didn't pay some circulation going to pay the local farmers who grew that corn. No, by would you have some of that? But praise singer, please, let don't talk. Yeah, Mama Pumolo, just uh, you've touched on the issue of mini meal. Sorry, sorry, our guest will give you just uh, two minutes. You know, you've touched on the issue of mini meal. Do you realize that the, the, the kilos of millimil has been reduced in order for them to reduce the price of millimil? So they are giving lesser millimil to the Zambians and lying to them that the price has gone down. Exactly. You know? And I've been oh? fighting with the yes. price singers on, on my page. Yeah. They are celebrating. Yeah. Hey, Wunga, Nava, Nava, Wesh. Tell me what is your Wunga? Wunga so what? 20 kilos. Yes. So do you think so Zambians do... are most? Yeah, so what do we call that? Theft. Yes. UPND. This is theft. You are robbing the Zambians. You know, and you Manipulation. Yeah. I went to parliament yesterday, Mama Pumulo. The police are everywhere around parliament. I asked myself, are we in a state of emergency? What is going on here in parliament? You know, and another thing I would like to say, it is very unfortunate and sad that these members of parliament have been suspended at a crucial time when they are supposed to debate the budget. The budget is a very, very important, you know, aspect of the economy that need all members of parliament to be present and debate it. So it is very sad that this has happened. You know, when I look at people like uh, Honorable Anthony Mumba, MP for Kantanshi, I really say, Honorable Mumba, shame on you. Shame on you. You know, you agree to be part of the confusion in PF. No wonder you have not been talking. This MP has been quiet for the longest time. As for Honorable Chavinga, he is even hardly in parliament. He's hardly in parliament. So, Honorable Anthony Mumba, you know, why Pima? Why Pima that uh, you think you can win an election in Kantanshi without that political bank backing backing you? Why don't you allow yourself to resign? Your conscience should, you know, apply to you. Resign and stand as an independent in Kantanshi. Same to Honorable Chavinga, resign. Give that seat away, resign, and join UPND and stand under UPND. Let's see what will happen. Yeah. And, Anthony Mumba, yeah. to be a leader of opposition. Uh, Anthony Mumba, to be the, the, the chief whip. Thank you, Mama Pumulo. Could we give our guest just five yes, minutes? Yes, go ahead. Uh, Murumendo, go ahead. The Honorable is here. Let us first acknowledge the presence of the Honorable Member Parliament of PETA UK, Honorable JJ Banda. Welcome, sir. Good evening, Honorable. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Uh, uh, yeah, is it comrade, my pro? You can go ahead and then the honorable will come after you. Is it my pro? Can I go ahead? Yes, yes, yes sir. 
Yes, I want Your Excellency, to touch how are you? Up. Greeting from your SG. My SG, the president is doing fine. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> <laughs> My SG, the president is getting ready to take over the power of instruments. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're most welcome. I can't wait to, I can't wait to start mobilizing the party. Yes, <laughs> yes, we need to start working on that. We need to register it as soon as possible. We want to party. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let, Go ahead, let, 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 point Before I forget, I don't know if you may uh, give me two minutes, please. Go, Go ahead. ahead. Go ahead, sir. Yes, uh, good evening, everybody. Good evening, good evening. Uh, I want to touch on uh, one significant thing that we've never noticed, uh, and uh, that is uh, the two elections that uh, Akainde Ichirem and Ed Garungu had uh, contested previously. Uh, the first election was in uh, 2020, uh, 2015. They went uh, for an election, two of them. And uh, Eddie Galungu emerged as a winner. On a slight uh, difference, the next one came in, it was the same scenario. But the other one that came in, they had a very big margin. But the only thing that we've forgotten as Zambians is where did that figure come from and why? This, this is going back to the point that uh, Madame. Uh, they want to party president. I don't know if she's a president. That was saying that Zambia is moving away from uh, the top 20 developing countries. In a time, in a time that uh, our former president uh, FJT took us to the West uh, deal of IMF. You remember in 1991? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the mines were privatized, were put in a uh, uh, these Bazunguzans. We didn't know how long. We just came to realize, no, it was a 30 year concession and uh, such kind of time. We, we didn't know. We just started seeing Buzakire is crumbling, Chiburuma is crumbling, you go to Chilabongwe, the same. People were dying. Here in uh, Kagwe, the zinc mine just sh shuttered down. Because of some uh, deals of, of such uh, of blindness to our former president, our late president FJT, and this group who went for IMF deal. So the deal came uh, long, long up to maybe 30 years, which was coming to 2020, 2019, somewhere there, if we check our calculations. That's where you see, that's where you saw KCM is coming back into our hands and some other mines. They are coming back into our hands. I don't know if you are following. We are following, yeah. yes. So these are the same people, they had interest. They had interest in that uh, issue. So they thought of uh, who can help them to do the deal back. Are you following? Yes. This is yes, just yes, my sure. opinion. This is just my opinion. And I'm hearing my opinion opinion because I've uh, deeply gone into it and see what happened. So this is where we saw now the big uh, unimaginable number given to the people that were preferable who can help the, the, their friends. If you, yeah. look, if you look at them, they were, not, they were not even ready to govern this country. No, not at all. They were they caught were not, unaware. They were not, not ready to do that. They were caught, you caught are, unaware. They did not plan yeah. They had not aligned their ministers. When you start a political party, it is time for you to start identifying people that are going to be part of your cabinet. Not Mwaya Wusha, Navarere, Kwatiwa Musokotwani, Navamirupi Wonse. You know, you start lifting people from all over. You Even start saying your she's retirement age, 68. Exactly. Yeah, that she came from retirement. Hmm? Yeah. Like if me without, here to without, go to yes. Without energy to run this country, my brother JJ Banda there, he has uh, he has got a very good uh, good uh, political life. I've, I've worked with him. 
a and lot I know of that is energy. energy. A lot of energy can take our country forward. Same as Munia, the Binwell, those young boys there, the team that was trying to, this yeah. year wanted to groom. You see? Yes. It's, it's unfortunately that thing has sunk. But I believe that spirit is still rising up. But uh, the, the advice I can give you, this damage is going under again for 30 years. This damage is very big. We are looking at it today like this. That's why we are seeing a lot of institution, institutions are crumbling down. And no one is, it wants anybody to stand for, to defend this, uh, this thing which is happening. I don't know if you can see that. And those yeah. that are in charge, they are ready to die for that. They don't want to lose power. They don't want. Anyway, my brother, thank you so much. Before I hand over to you, now my brother, before you go, my brother, before you go, let me comment. Uh, let me comment on this. Today, I want to tell. I want to tell you one thing. Um, I've been following politics since I was young, and uh, yes. from UNIP, UNIP, when they lost power. They couldn't come back into power because of one thing. When they lost yes. power from MMD, MMD yes. pushed to the members from UNIP. Yes. And then that is our politics. And then uh, those who were strong in UNIP, they joined MMD. Then uh, yes. Then MMD, when they lost power, if you remember very well, uh, President Sata may so rest in peace. Uh, Seventy. Five percent of the deputy ministers he appointed from MMD. 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 That was the end of MMD. But now I'll tell you. The, I'll, I'll give you this example. Uh, look, PF lost power to UPND. How many members have gone to UPND? Nobody. And then you are saying Nobody. that the political party can't come back. And then you are saying that. It's a dead political party. No, what I'm trying to, the point, no. honorable, I'm trying to raise is that. Uh, yes, I know, but uh, I'm just giving you the background before I come back to to what you are saying. Um, yes. To those who are following, those who are saying that uh, maybe the, polit the former political party can't come back into power. No, so that's, that's, not, that, that's not the case. They should know to say, in, in the former ruling party, PF, the UPND hasn't pushed any member. And my brother, I'm sure you're a good follower of uh, football. When a team oh. in, in Europe, when it's in the Champion League, when it has qualified to go to, uh, to Premier League, they, they, they buy players support because those good. players are under champion, they can't manage. So the UPND, yes, they, they don't have people who can talk, who can talk on their behalf, who even campaign on their behalf. So one, that no, one no. is the weakness. And then two, the IMF, which you are saying, the IMF is digging the grave. Last year, at least they managed one meter. This year, another one meter has gone. As we are talking now, NAPSA, for three months, they have failed to secure bonds. Nothing is there. For three months, they have failed to secure bonds, government bonds. So as a result, and in NAPSA, you know, that's our reserve. That's where we get money when we have, as a country, if we haven't managed to, to mobilize the money for salaries or for civil servants, we always go to NAPSA. Yes. But as, as we yes. are talking right now, NAPSA doesn't have money. Honorable <coughs> Banda, before, before, before yes. you move on uh, that issue of NAPSA, you remember that technocrat from NAPSA? I don't know if he's not. I don't know if he's from NAPSA or anywhere. He came on uh, on a platform. I think on, on Lady Phoenix. He made an overall advice to say, no, yeah. this issue of uh, partial with with partial payment, it cannot work. It's going to collapse the uh, NAPSA system. 
And he emphasized but too much. Know, he begged even not to go. It is the but you remember, you remember, that the, people, the consortium is the one who has collapsed NAPSA. I'm a partial payment machine guy with twenty percent. It's nothing. And uh, no, and uh, no. the my, my president, price, madam. my president, I can tell you to say that consortium hasn't yet got any any money. Not yet. So where have they? taking the money the money that if I, if I, I, drained our money it may look like it's book, small but it was huge book. because they were asked to say when they release those money using partial withdrawal the money in the circulation which it failed because no one even those who got partial withdrawal they can't even point at any business which you doing now that man is nothing want to say something can you raise your hand so you do, we are not talking over each other if you want to say something raise your hand and then uh, you can take the floor you you may guide madam you may guide oh you are finished you, know, you can go ahead you can Okay, let me let me do, let me let me let me finalize so that the honorable JJ Banda yeah, can, can you uh, finalize yes but when you speak just raise your hand if you want to talk so we are not talking over each other thank you all right now you can talk yes uh, on the issue on the issue of uh, the this consortium uh, concerning even our road that is they uh, are doing here in Dora it has even brought a lot of congestion and destabilization on, on our traffic in Indora. Because in my entire life, I've never seen such kind of work and inconveniencing motorists in such a nature. And looking at the time they are doing that load, on a small stretch, they have taken now, it's, we, are going, we are going into a month, fourth month, and I'm telling you, it is pathetic. This is showing that very shortly the lanes will fall and there won't be any work. You understand? So this is just the issue they're trying to, to show to the people that they're working on the load, initially a load which won't even see progress. So uh, I, I, I thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you. We are yeah, good evening. for joining. Mama Matifa, the floor is yours. Um, our dear brother there from the Copper Belt, uh, really, uh, you know, when you're building uh, uh, roads, it's not a child's play. So at least maybe let's give them a thumbs up that uh, the roads on, in the Copper Belt have now uh, started to be repaired because they have been pathetic for a very, very long time. I don't know whether you agree with me, Honorable JJ Banda, but uh, the last time I went to the Copper Belt, it's really full of potholes, you know, and... Uh, I don't know whether it was in 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 progress when uh, uh, the PF was in government that once they move they finish with Lusaka they will move to the Copper Belt. But at least uh, something is being done. Uh, the only thing you are complaining about is congestion. I think that should actually been uh, have been addressed before they decide uh, addressed and sorted out. You create another passage before you actually start inconveniencing the, the, the motorists, because a lot of them need to go to work, take kids to school. Sometimes, you know, they are rushing a patient to a hospital in an ambulance. So maybe if any UPND people are here listening or the, somebody from the, the, the government, please try and uh, address this uh, situation that the people on the Copa Belt are going through. Thank you, Mama Pomolo. So, Honorable Jay Banda, you are next. But before you come in, there is a comment. I'm reading comments, and I would uh, we'll, we'll be addressing the comments that make sense. And if you are here to um, to cyber bully us or to what is the word? I forgot the word. But if you are here to troll us, you will be deleted as a warning. And then if you repeat again, we'll block you from the page. So, but I want to. There's a comment which came, which uh, is saying that so you think Munia Zulu and JJ Banda can leave this country, and I'm responding to you to say, look at what has happened in West Africa. There are young 
men who have taken over <coughs> running the government in West Africa. I don't support how they took. They took over power through military, whatever. But what they are doing has put them in the top 20 countries, top 20 developing countries in the world. These are young men. Mulia Zulu's age, JJ Banda's yeah, age. Yeah. So the time has gone for you people to hang it up. Even when Akaunda, when they when they were fighting for independence, they were youths. They were the age of JJ Banda. Mm -hmm. So you think Panji Kaunda can do something to improve Zambia? <laughs> You think Bahari Simwinga can do something to put Zambia in the top 20 growing economies? Mm. But Nelly Muti, look where she has landed our country now. Mm, from a country that has been respected in the continent of Africa and the whole world for democracy, we are a laughing stock. Shame. Honorable J. Banda, the floor is yours. Yeah. Maybe um, be, before honorable, before honorable, honorable, before you come in, I just want to add uh, what on what Mama Pumulo has said. Really, honorable JJ Banda, honorable Binwo Mpundu, honorable Kangombe, Future. honorable Munia Zulu. Yes. Well done. Yes, you are the future. Well, well done. done. West Africa, you, they have changed. They you are, are the energy. future. And let me tell you, English is not a level of measurement for you to be a leader. No. It's not a level of measurement. Chinese don't you, speak English. Exactly. Germans speak their ministers. own language. Yes. They are ministers. You French are not an English. Their own language. But Kwadi Wafia Namano Ayachi Fiadidwa. Honorable JJ Banda, do not stop. Yes, you give you know give the youth an example yes. that even they can get to your position. Honestly, they have Be time to, in, to give jobs. Yeah, they have time to give jobs to uh, Mrs. Zalomi. See, they have time. Addis, Addis, Mary Muti, all these Musokotwanis. Those are supposed to be your grandfathers. Now, Pafu Avantu Pat Ero Avantu Ambi Varefialu, Avana Vesu Varefialu. Naime Mubadwi was so more on a vegetica mutialo. Mamva honorable. So Naime Mwezipima. And to Aku Petauke Vezibati, who you mun to take a mui capo you. Akat can be the Munumba Marumurumura. Mamvaka. So, si pole kapu. Ya mena ya madezo wa micho sapo ya yanga ni 30 days. Osati ya miste discourage. Nayo nayo. Nayo nayo onarebo. Kwa imana wena. Pantu vali kufuri kwa anu. Oyanga na pali mweo. We are together, not even behind. We are together. And also I want to ask to my SG. When we form power. In Parliament, we shall be interpreters in all languages. English will not be mandatory. You speak Muchitundu Chobe. In Ganuevo Kachoko, you are a member of Parliament. We shall have an interpreter there to interpret what you are saying from Kachoko into yes. English, from Oshi into English. This mm -hmm. nonsense of limiting people because of language has yeah. to go. It's long overdue. You can take over. Uh, thank, uh, thank, uh, for me, what I can say is that, um, for me, those who are saying that, that uh, you know, let me take you back during my campaign. A lot of people, they only, a lot of people were campaigning against me, telling me to say, I, I won't be articulating things in part because, I'm, uh, I don't know how to speak Queen's language fluently. I, it, during the campaigns, I told the people in Petrauke to say, mm -hmm. in Parliament, I'm not going to use long, long, long English, but I'm going to use short, short English, which will bring development. 
And then the people mm -hmm. in Petauke, they had confidence in me. And I they know about my English. So I don't even get offended. Even if I speak broken English, I don't care because remember what the people paid me to do. It's not just to go and get the allowance, no. But it's to take their challenges so that the government should provide the solution. Because in our constitution, mm -hmm. government is supposed to provide the solution through which comes in the past. <clears throat> Look, the time when I uh, uh, to parliament, I've delivered a lot of motions which have gone through, which those people who are reigned, they have never seen a single motion in parliament. In Ilunga, in Northwest Province, the whole, the whole Northwestern Province, there are more than 12 members of parliament in Northwestern Province. But the buses were not going to Minirunga because of the bad state of the road from, uh, from Kalumbira to Minirunga. But because of that, I just went to Minirunga to visit one day. From there, I came to, I painted that issue. Right now, the Minirunga, the road has been wet on in Minirunga, and the buses are to Minirunga. So you can see the same short, short English. It's bringing the fruits in Parliament. Even in the, the chiefs in, loved me a farm because of representing them. They have given even me to give me extra wife that I should marry. Although I've got to write, I'm married. <laughs> <not married. laughs> you know, I, I have, that is a touching testimony. It's a touching re revelation. Yeah. I lived in Winilunga in yeah. Kaleni, Chifi Kaleni. I lived there. I know the area very well. Yes. So what I mm. just want to say to the youth in Mwinilunga, keep these people who are doing nothing. allowances. This is what I'm saying by youth in Mwinilunga. Contact JJ Banda and run for yourself. Kui votela 2026. Well done on that. Continue. Honorable, yeah. so I, I, have a, I, I have a question for you. Um, have you, uh, somebody has just reminded me of, of on this program. What do you have to say about this new minimum wage that has been put, uh, put, uh, put on by the government? Across board. Yeah, I'm coming to that. I'm coming to there. So let me just explaining about uh, what I was explaining. So uh, my president, when you when you are watching Parliament uh, TV, since the reception of the introduction of Parliament TV, when you see on the Parliament screen there. There were no no one who was translating. But when I was uh, campaigning, I promised my people to say the, the, the uh, persons living with a disability. When I go to Paris, who are, who are deaf, they will be following parliament, they will be writing. I went to parliament. I'm the one who caused the who raised the the point of order heard about it right now people who are living with it especially deaf they are able to follow parliament it's because of jj banda the same jj and those who are educated just follow they were just sitting in doing in parliament without <laughs> even considering that they are persons with disability i I thought of my predecessor. 
Mm -hmm. I think Honorable JJ Banda has some challenge with his. Yeah, let's remove him and add him. Honorable Banda, you can come back. You can rejoin. Go ahead, Anik. Yeah. I like the word he used that they were ndwi, you know. Ndwi, and, uh, yeah. Ndwi. yeah. You know, they want to take ad it. It's these old parliamentarians that have been there for more than 20, 25 years in parliament that want to now take advantage of the young, upcoming parliamentarians. I watched Honorable JJ Banda. He was not adopted by PF. You know, and yet he was liked so much in his constituency. But I loved his stamina because he decided to still push on, and he stood and uh, he stood uh, independently against the previous MP who happened to be Doris Lea at the time. And boy, oh boy, he walloped PF like nobody's business. That is why we tell you politicians, listen to what is on the ground. You know, have that um, habit of listening to what is going on, what the Zambians are saying. Do not be so arrogant like what you do usually when you, you are voted into power and what is happening even to the current administration and what happened to the past administration you become so big-headed your heads balloon up to where you think you have no time to listen to those people that put you on those seats honorable jj banda once again i want to tell to tell you thumbs up for teaching them a lesson because the people of peta uk finally spoke they listened to you they believed in you they trusted you they will never forget this that's what we are telling you leaders that are in administration at the at the moment listen to the cries of your people it is the people that will discipline you Mama Pumulo, I think it's uh, it's uh, five to midnight in uh, in Zambia. This program can get very addictive, but I think our message has been delivered. It is our sincere hope that ama kwete ama tui vale umfwa ko ero na wa shirefo kumfwa lueno muke sadi da owe. Make because we, we will be here, we'll be talking, we'll be watching what is going on in Zambia, and we will be talking. We are not here to incite anybody, we are just here to educate and inform the Zambians in order for them to make that informed decision. The Zambians will make a decision, but we are just, just enlightening them. Kabidi, you have stopped people from campaigning. You have stopped people from grouping to go and transmit their messages to the people. You say you don't have enough manpower, but you have enough manpower to go and give a junkie like Mao Sampa uh, 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 protection at an illegal conference. You have enough manpower to go and guard Mao Sampa at his residence, but you have no manpower to give other political parties that are going around delivering their message to the Zambians. It is really a shame. UPND, you went through this, but it seems like you don't learn a lesson. You are equally doing the same. It is time to change because that is what is going to cost you a vote. Honorable, welcome back to the program. Thanks. Sir a lot my apology my apology excellence our usg uh, there's lot shedding here in petauke we don't have power in petauke so i'm sure you can see i'm in the car uh, wow. so the phone has gone off oh wow wow
Yeah. So, so my apology to the viewers. So I was explaining to Sam, uh, there are a lot of people who usually say who condemn me with my with my English, but for me, I don't give up. And uh, even if I speak broken English, as long as my people back here in Petauke, they are receiving development. So they don't care. And mm. they know, even mm. if someone tells them to say, yeah, your MP spoke a broken English yesterday, they will say, no, 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 no. He even during campaign, he promised us to say, I'll speak short, short, short English. As long as the speaker understands. That's why today I've been suspended. I've, I've been suspended because I'm there, I'm talking. Because if I was just, uh, if I wasn't talking in the house, I don't think they can suspend someone uh, who is not active. They can only suspend someone who is active participating. And because this man, the Zambian people, they should know to say, this month, the sexual, uh, uh, sexual education bill, it's coming this month. And they know to say, Deja Banda, Binwe Mpundu, uh, Kangombe, Munia, they are against the sexual uh, education. That's why they know to say it will be difficult to pass it. And in another country, in another country here in Africa, when passing that bill, the sexual education bill, they even passed the gay rights. So even here, we should be careful following parliament to see that that shouldn't happen. Even if all the voices have been just from parliament because parliament is closing next month on the 13th. And then us, our suspension, it, it took it, to come to an end, I think somewhere in uh, next month, 24th. So we, we are not going to be there. So, but uh, I know God is watching. God won't let our, um, our culture values and our Christianity values to be broken to be taken away from our country. So I know this uh, sexual education bill, there are a lot of hidden things which will be there. But in the name of who, to say we, we wanted to prevent uh, any teenager pregnancy, let's start teaching our children. But to me, it's not good I'm against it because a five-year-old girl or boy can't start learning about our, the private parts. It's uncalled for. Yes, it might be sound uh, to other people to say, no, it's good, we need to teach them. But when you start teaching them, they start now uh, practicing. You know, I was the pupil before, Whatever I was learning from school, when I come back home, I used to uh, practice to see how does it work. Now, if we start uh, sexual education, if that bill will go through, and if it will come with a lot of things, where are we taking our country? Where is our Christianity values? Where is our cultural values? Which means all of them, they are gone. Because right now, the leader of opposition who is in the house can't even defend any wrongs. They will be just agree to anything. All those voices which have remained in the house, I don't think they will be able to defend. I don't think there are voices which can talk and the people can follow. But I know God, God is with us Zambians. Just here in Petauke, right now, it's not even necessary to talk about sexual education bill. We are supposed to talk about how are we going to help our people with this cost of living? Because cost of living, check on our uh, minimum wage. 
minimum wage, they are saying that someone should do the lowest, should get 2,000, 2,400 quarter. Now 2,400 quarter, fuel around it is 30 quarter, which means transport, it's how much going for work and coming. When you remove from 2,000, you are staying in Chawama, your working place is in town. Every day, you are spending how much? Every day for transport, you are spending 50 quarter. 50 quarter times 10 in 10 days. It's about 500 quarter. So in 30 days, it's 1,500. Then minimum wage, you are putting at 2,400. That transport is 1,500. You are remaining with 1,000. Accommodation, it's how much? You have got children who are going to school, it's how much? Instead of working towards that, but we are here now doing politics, uh, watching our constitution being ripped in parliament and everyone in our country, they thought that if they can't get justice from everywhere, they can only get justice from parliament because our country has got three arms of government. There's the legislative, and the, um, there's the executive, there's the judiciary. If someone fails to get justice from executive, they will run to judiciary and the uh, parliament. But right now, parliament is the worst. Parliament is the worst because look, the people who, whereby the registrar of society hasn't yet accepted, have just received the papers, not enacted on them, and then you go and change the leadership at parliament. <laughs> you change all the leadership at parliament, the independent leadership, as a speaker, you go and buy four independent members of parliament, you pay them with tickets so that they can withdraw then the column collapse and then you remove the leadership for independence is that democracy democracy is gone and then in parliament we have got two female speakers look the other female speaker who was the former mp the way she presides we have never heard when attracted sangano honorable when she's the uh, presiding. We have never heard the chatting members of parliament, warning members of parliament. She respect members of parliament because she was a member of parliament before. But uh, there's another cadre who has come in the name of uh, presiding. See how the confusion usually be in the house when she's presiding. Where are we taking our country? Where are the voices? Where are the voices which are supposed to talk? Where are the only energy words? Where are they? But all of them, they are quiet. Why? Because they are scared. But I can tell you to say, Zambians, they know, I'm sure we were together with my mom yesterday, and then we even discussed to say, Zambian, they keep quiet, but they know how to talk in a ballot box. Yeah. In in the ballot box, they talk very well. Look, the way PF, the way PF had the behaved towards the Zambians, look the way they were removed. And everyone was quiet. But on the voting day, look the way there were people that were dancing. So even in 2026, expect the people starting dancing around 02 as they are on the queue. So my mom, those suspension, our, your excellence, those the suspension, it's not mere suspension, but it's the bill which is coming about the bill, which will come with a lot of hidden things in it, sexual education bill. Remember in West Africa, they brought the same bill and in the same bill, there were gay rights. They didn't know that they were approving gay rights in that country.
So even us as Zambians, we need now to be very careful about this bill which is coming. Yeah. Because I can I can tell you something. There were people who were who were marching, those who were even raising the flags the uh, for for gay. Check. They were not arrested and then charged uh, with the with the case relating to gay. They were charged with the unlawful assembly and the and the unlawful procession. And and we should ask to say where is that case today? That case has died a natural death. Don't even, 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 uh, even Miles Sampa should be arrested for unlawful assembly because he said he was going for retreat. Then from a retreat he went, it was a convention. That is unlawful assembly. Yeah, I'm it, sure it, the president the president is seen and the president promised the rule of law. Yeah, so but, they promised but, the rule of yeah, law. But, 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 the rule of law. And Lawyer he promised the law of law. Service. Yeah, so we are waiting his reaction towards that. Because as as the man who promised the Zambian that is going to uphold the constitution of Zambia, we are waiting to hear to 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 hear from the president the happenings at parliament the way the speaker has changed the leadership the way the speaker she's behaving we are waiting to hear from the president because the president promised us that he is going to protect the constitution of zambia yes. that the president is going to protect the rule of law yes. and the other thing why I was suspended, our, your excellence. Yes. Next week, 15th, next week on Wednesday, I brought a motion, a motion to nominate, to nominate uh, persons living with a disability and the youth. Because in our constitution, Article 259, it's very instructive to say, when nominating those eight nominated members of parliament, one, you should not, the president should nominate a youth who is below 34 years. A president should nominate someone, a, a person living with a disability. And then that motion is coming next week, but we have been suspended. So they never wanted that motion so that Zambian should see. Because already there, the constitution has been breached. Our constitution has been breached there. Because it's instructive. It doesn't say because of uh, <coughs> balancing. The constitution says anyone who is supposed who's, those who are following, they should get this uh, uh, article 259. It's very instructive article 259 for us the people of petau the the people of petauke with short short english we found that cross that's why we even put the motion but the motion i don't know what the management at parliament they're going to do since i'm suspended if they push it to next sitting or oh, they will just collapse it. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah. So I'm sure someone can can read that article for us. If he, your excellency, if you have got the constitution nearby, just read that article for us. You hear what the constitution says says about uh, the nominated members of parliament. Yes, Honorable SG, I have my computer here, so I am reading it just now. <laughs> okay. Yes. But, but you know, you have brought up very valid eye-opening points. And uh, 
Yeah, while Mama Pumulo is looking for Article 259, I just wish to contribute to say uh, instead this same minimum wage, instead of addressing the ailing economy, you know, you have re and revising the lives of the people by arresting this harsh economy. You will now bring in the minimum wage, but you do not uh, uh, make it competitive with what the people are expected to live with. The dollar is for, you know, the kwacha is forever falling. You are not arresting it. In Bemba, regarding the rights of the LGBTQ, we say, Pafu Awantu, Pashara Awantu. Some of these decisions, we will come and reverse them. It's because they are under pressure from their funders. Talking about the NGOs, they just eat donors' money. They are toothless. Mwemwa kambi ratiwari ndui ma NGOs. Padie na wola vila pano. Ma NGOs wali ndui okungo fora chara ndala mazama hala. Yeah. So NGOs should just be, you know, banned because there is nothing that they are doing. Nothing. They just keep quiet. Huh? And I want to appeal to the UPND that usually when you see a large turnout on the day of voting, it should be a source of concern. Really, it should be a source of concern for you. Because people rise up in Zambia, because that is their own time they can talk to you. So what... Yeah, you're found like out? the crowd. Yes, yep. I have found, found it. it. Yes, yes, so maybe you can read. Article 259, nomination and appointments. One, where a person is empowered to make a nomination or an appointment to a public office, the person shall ensure uh, 1C, equitable representation of the youth and persons with disability, where these qualify for nomination or appointment. So the article number, I'm going to type it in the comments. So, you know, I am so impressed with you, my Secretary General. This is what we need. We need people who are in parliament to make sure change is happening, to make sure we are improving, not sure in parliament to kill the democracy. It is a shame, yeah. really. All this thing that is happening is really like I don't know what Vahaka in this vision for Zambia is. Yeah, so your excellency, you have seen that uh, that cross, but uh, that one it has been breached because of who? At because of it, equity. Equity. Yeah. Equitable representation. So equitable representation of the youth yeah. and the person with disability so they have to Do. put a person there youth and disabled persons have to be among those appointed yes but do we have those people you, uh, you, you, I, I don't think so you are the one in parliament is there any youth there who was appointed or Disabled no person. one, no one youth was nominated, despite our constitution saying that I'm sure it's there on article. So you, these are the things which we should research as parliamentarians. But some of the parliamentarians, they just know to go and draw the same allowance, which the people they never sent for, to us to parliament to go and get allowance and drink tea. But all of them, instead of going through the constitution to find such cross, they only drink tea. That's all. And you know, just to 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 to, to emphasize your point, every Zambian now prints the constitution. It is your job because they are curtailing the members of parliament. You elected these members of parliament, so now you people, your people. Honorable in my SG, your people should be the one to talk because they, they don't want you to talk. So you must have meetings and explain what is happening there, and your people should be talking and asking questions. 
like you said, we are waiting for the president to make a statement on what is going on in parliament because the president, his presidency is only legitimate if he's respecting the rule of law. He swore yeah. to protect the constitution. Once the president stop, stops uh, respecting and upholding the constitution, then his presidency is questionable. Actually, Even Madam Speaker, can come to a stage where now members of parliament they can start proceedings to impeach the president too because he's abrogating the constitution. Even the speaker, yeah, uh, she's a lawyer. She was the one who even supposed to advise the president about Article 259. Yes. Not someone, not a villager from Petauke who is not educated to start advising, to be a lawyer now, to start advising the president. You are educated, my brother. You <laughs> stop. I think, comrade, my SG, you are educated. Stop saying that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's this, because of this the people. A, this is an inferiority complex. Uh, this is another form of oppression, you know? This thing of telling people who don't have a master's degree or who don't have a bachelor's degree is a form of oppression. And I want to say that in our, in our um, villages, we managed our communities without degrees. People were able to manage, resolve issues, you know, preserve culture. They didn't have bachelor's degrees. So all this yeah. thing in Valena Defia, my degree, is a way of separating people, is a way of making class societies, you know. Now you have you, you now you have seen whereby the, when people start complaining because they another job of Madam Speaker, who is a lawyer, she's the one who is supposed to advise the president to say the president, your excellence, you promised to say you are going to uphold the constitution of yes. Zambia. Check about the article. 259. We haven't followed. Please, can we do the amendments? Uh, let's amend. Let's withdraw some appointments. Let's appoint persons living with a disability. Let's uh, nominate uh, a, a, a youth to <coughs> because of it equable. But it's there now. It's not there because the constitution is very clear. Yes, we understand to say when nominating a member, it's the, um, it's, it's, um, it's, it's up to the president. It's a prerogative of the president to, to nominate. But Article 259, it's very instructive to the president to say as we are nominating because of trying to balance it equable because of trying to balance a youth should be there and the persons with disability is there but it is the speaker so to say should be balanced when pushing this motion that's why she decided to say let's see suspend this member it is it is very unfortunate and i think i can say something and then if i'm at if I'm, then my sg will be the last one i just want to comment on the gay rights and sex education and minimum wage so in closing i just want to say on gay rights zambian parliament the upnd government respect our culture please why are you allowing a foreign country to impose a culture that is not even accepted here? Here where I am, I'm in the USA, it's not accepted. There is pushback about these LGBT rights. They are still fighting these cases, these cases of gay rights. So in a, in, in a culture like Zambia, how can we be ready to accept something which is not part of our culture. Like we can't go to America and tell the Americans to accept in part polygamy. Can we do that? Can we have a tell our job by the Nukupava Kashivata because we never wish to have a temple? Let us respect our culture. Can these same IMF and Emma Westerners, these countries who are coming, go to 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 maybe Kuma Arabia, Mukumbeva 
uh, introduce gay rights in your in your, in, 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 in your, your education system? Why are they handpicking certain countries and imposing this? Why? And, and I want to talk to the thing of this uh, sex education to young children. I want to tell you, me, me I lived, I've been here 23 years. And when I came to the United States, my kids were young. Woman and after nine years, you take them to a doctor's office. After a few minutes, the doctor will kick you out of the room. The doctor remains with the with the with your nine-year-old child you don't even know what the doctor is discussing and you find that that's why we have a lot of problems in, in these countries because they destroy families by cutting you know parents out of the picture but we have our cultures. Zambia, we have our culture. Sex education has been a topic among our culture. Aunties, aunties educate children. We have our own way of doing things. Why can't Baraka in the way America as we do it in Zambia? not fair that we should be adopting practices of some countries when we ourselves our our cultures are not being adopted why are you forcing us to do your culture as we are not forcing you to do our culture i watched a man in kenya when they were talking about this gay rights he said if you want gay rights give visas for everyone who wants to be gay to go and practice it in your country period that's what they say it's a simple solution we can't stop people from being gay or whatever but if a, an individual want to be a gay practice their gay rights give them a visa to those countries where they where it is legal let them and go live there they should not impose it on zambia how many things are they going to impose on Zambia that is going to, to ruin our culture? Already even their economic policies have imposed on Zambia. And look at our, our currency now. They are imposing these economic policies. Look, what are you punishing? 23 to 1 US. Yeah? Tax break, right? Papaya. Everything they are in, imposing on our country is has turned out to be a disaster. But in closing, I just want to say, we Zambians, we have young people, fresh brains. We have people who are educated and people who are not educated. We have people who think outside the box. Look at what is happening in West Africa. There are young leaders all over there. So it is yeah. time for this new dawn to sign off and let them go peacefully. We are waiting for the president to make a statement. He can't be quiet after causing all this pandemonium. Pandemonium ya kwa mao sambaya mbirepa 24th October. Nero ni pashani wa president very quiet without a comment on it. What the hell is going on? It's some nonsense. It is some nonsense. And then the minimum wage should come to $500. Ero nomba katuishi mpio kwa kashifunya. Because I want to wait in Pia. Mines are in private hands. In Pia, she said they are milking. They are siphoning money out of the economy. So, where do you expect somebody to pay even $500 a minimum wage? Do you even think? These people, man. But the floor is yours, and then Honorable J. Banda to myself. Thank you, Mawa Pumulo. It is really a shame when you talk about minimum wage. Ba, mwebu teko, mule ufako nensoni. Minimum wage, but mule itaba muisa, vale isa kuno. Vale poka ama minerals, muno muzambia, vale mishire filindi. Not even doing anything for the community. Ha? Mule randa pali minimum wage. Mwari kwa techi umamu Zambia. Ichi umana chwechi kulu sana. But 
Mulefu oku, oku fimbisha, ama pockets yenu. That's all that you are interested in. You are not even interested in the future of this country. Kare tuwa pokobu ntungwa muno muzambia, mwitu wesha kunuma. Teti tuwerele kunuma mwewe na zambia. Teti tuwerele kunuma. So tamuaka tuweshe kunuma. Tuwariabu. You will not manage to bring us backwards in the name of pleasing your funders. Start by telling them to accept polygamy before you bring if you are well, well, Muno Muzambia. And I want to be our parliamentarians that have remained in that house. They did not fall from the sky. It took a man and a woman to bring them onto this earth for them to start saying, if you are where they were, their parents had trust in you that as you grow up, you'll be a responsible citizen. No, if Muzambia. As the same Kenyan uh, MP said, Papa, I'm a free ticket. I'm a free visas. How did the boy child, the, the girl child manage? We need, need to know what is going to be taught in as far as sex education is concerned. We need guidelines. You can't just leave it open that we need to have uh, to start bringing sex, uh, sexual education. Yes, it's got its pros and cons. But let the people debate on it and let them be provided with guidelines. What do you really want to, to teach the, boy, the girl child and the boy child? What is entailed in that education of sexual education? Yes, Mama Pumulo. <laughs> I went from high school, primary school, college in Shapuri de Pwepumo. Paka na kusha na college na hika dida na ukwa. Why? Who am fundira sex education ni nani? It's my parents. Eh? Yeah. And the so community... You mean, so, Awabantu, you mean trying to satisfy their donors? Awobe nama donors, uko kuine muika la mama pumulo, they are not in a, ya itakuwa wa, naba ichaba pula mafumo. All of them. Ayo kutuwa pula, uchila nilane kutuwa achita, but getting educated in a classroom does not mean tawaka pule fumo. Vala pula kumama team mamu, when it is a high population, 14 years. Yeah. So Zambians, all we are saying is some of the, we should be very careful with some of these laws that we pass because it will come to haunt us. But as I've said, tamuatuwe shekunuma, tuadiabu kakale, tamuatuwe shekunuma. Population control, mama. This is the agenda of population control. Na lipanga group na la bika link kuli ramema videos ya ama audios which are circulating I can't circulate them pano pa social media pa but in the WhatsApp group there is very you know sensitive audios because ama sungu na la monati Africa population ile kula so they are trying to kuwaisha population here Africa by introducing if you need to kuwa chavu mbali fa ya na ketemu fiala ni maisha so that is there go because why you show with fire one two na 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 if you smell well it's a quite long good day you all know the story the story yeah which i reduce about africa mulet yalana sign so no man i'm quite now with an account audio come over to the land that i tell you for the shape if you have if you have a mosquito if you're feeling if you're not quite what a problem not quite a work we saw the amount of people who are in africa to the move up we are in deep problems because of what we have. And if we don't have good leaders to defend our what we have, we will perish. Because 
pauti chao tika wa shairi waka leta kule niku wa shweka eh agenda ya wa and my people my people will perish for lack of knowledge yes so mwewe na zambia tuwalipoka kare ubuntu ngwa ha so fili wala anda tingawa mono mulweni ya isa no lupi olu ingi e ululu ino lupi olu ingi lule isa wiko kola umusebe we muine wachalo that is what zambians need to do it is not about the money. Sometimes you must have values and, and principles for your own country. Why can't you take the suji light and sell yourself? Go ahead, to appreciate honorable SG wider. Yeah, uh, thanks a lot, Your Excellency. Your Excellency, I just want to make uh, an appeal to you. As uh, as you take over the country, and as your SG, <laughs> I'm appealing to you that uh, uh, you should put a policy that uh, any, any, any investor who wants to own a mine in zambia these big these, these big mines first they should build for us a university a, a proper university which the same mine should be sponsoring those students under that university from that province and also a biggest hospital we shouldn't be going to South Africa, coming to Europe for medication no. because they want our minerals. So, as they want our minerals, they should do, uh, provide for us those things. I can assure you, Your Excellency, people will remember you, even the generations, generations to come. Oh. That's the first one. Uh, thank you, my SG. Welcome, comrade. I just want to comment on what you have said. My the plan for Ubuntu is we are going to own at least 51%. This is our land. Why are we getting 3% in royalty and dividends? That is my plan. We should yeah. actually even be getting 90%. For, yeah, so for all as I yes. Go ahead, Hello. Okay, yeah, so, as, so as I conclude, uh, um, for me, uh, uh, I just want to tell Zambians to say, Zambian, this is a time to hold our hands together because I can assure you to say, God is with us Zambians and God will not let these things pass through like uh, sexual education because it comes with uh, hidden policies underground. So I, I wish and hope that God is going to, through the prayer, God is, uh, is going to expose all those which will be uh, under that uh, view. And also, uh, as your SG, your Excellency, I can assure you to say our motion to ask the government, to ask the president to, to fulfill, to uphold Article 259. It won't just sleep like this until it should be done. Because our member, Vatira, Ichikaripa, so we need persons with a disability because they know the need of a wheelchair. They know a need of a walking stick. They know the need of sign language. So they know all those things, but they don't have anyone to talk on their behalf in that parliament. That's why I decided I did the research. I went countrywide using my own money, not the speaker's money, but my own money 
going conducting a research i found that we need the youth because of that to uphold that article 259 and that article 259 i can assure you to say the youths, the persons with disability, they won't sleep. They will be praying every day until they are nominated in the house. <laughs> because it's not their wish and it's not their fault, but it's God's wish. And even in the Constitution, it's very instructive. Even if it's the prerogative of the president, but it's instructive to the president that the persons with disability, they, they are needed in the house. Because right now, if there were persons with disability in the house, they were even going to guide the speaker to start thinking upright. Hello. But, Hello. But you can yes. see, our okay. parliament is down. not represented. Yes, let our comrades speak and then we can close. Comrade yeah. uh, Honorable SG, let our guest speak and then you close after him. Okay. Thank you. Otherwise, you've made a good point. We need an advocate for the youths and the people living with disabilities in our parliament. That is the best person who can promote and expose their challenges. Comrade, and the constitution provides that. Yes, the constitution provides. Yes. yes. So ah. I want also tomorrow you capture that uh, cross for the constitution and then you throw it on the page so that people can debate in the comments. Yes. Can yes. see because yes. they don't because uh, people are not aware about that cross. That is excellent. I will do that right after this show. Comrade, you are welcome, our guests. Thank you so much, uh, Madam Pumulo, and uh, I'm glad that to, to hear the voice of uh, my Honorable JJ Banda. I'm from Canada here, but my Honorable JJ Banda, you are my hero. I'm telling you. He is. He's hero. the man of the yeah. moment. You <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, Munia, Munia, Honorable Munia Zuru. And uh, uh, Honorable Pundu, I think, is the Nkana for MP for Nkana, and the one, um, the one they just uh, suspended for for another um, Kitwe. I think, what's his name again? Christopher Binwell, yes. You yes. guys are just my heroes. I'm telling you. You know, when I'm just listening from you guys, I just don't even move out. My wife will be saying, what's wrong with you? And you just leave, let me, let me listen to this. <laughs> it's a revolution. Guy. Yeah. The revolution, actually, I'm big. You guys, you know? I'm so proud of you, what yes. you're doing in Parliament. And the suspension is not suspension. It's an honor to you guys for what you're doing. Yes. Uh, we have honored you. And thank you so much for standing for us. We really appreciate you guys. Uh, stand your ground. I mean, if they get that allowance from you, what is an allowance to you guys? You know, what you're doing is more than allowance which the, which the speaker has uh, taken away from you. And it's a shame for the speaker because she's playing double standard as a lawyer. She's supposed to be upright in her judgment. And uh, whatever she's doing is really a shame. And uh, I mean, we can, it's not even something that you can even write about. It's a shame. And uh, I'm sure after this, this guys leave the government, they will be dancing to the tune of the law. I don't think they will be gone scot-free. Uh, but you guys, uh, JJ Banda, you are my hero man. I'm telling you. Munia Zulu, go and tell you. Honorable Munia Zulu and those guys in Quito, the two guys in Quito, you guys are doing a great job in, in, the, in the parliament. Please do not be compromised by wrong things. Stand your ground and do the right thing. You know, and uh, when you do that, you know, there is time that is going to reward you. And God is going to bless you for what you're doing. You're not doing it for your own, but you're doing for all of us. Even if some of us are in very far, like I'm in Canada right now, you know, you guys are fighting for us. When we come back home, we're going to, we, we, we'll be saying we are going somewhere. We are going home where, they, where we, we can enjoy ourselves. Right now, there's nothing much to write about Zambia. There's just so much, so much chaos right now. There's no way... Uh, the government is trying to really just so destroy the, the opposition so they can continue.
control whatever they want to do. So you guys just stand your ground and uh, you may not be PF, you may not be any other, but you guys, your presence there presents Zambia, not a, a political party. We pray that God will give you the strength to fight for us. Madam Bumuo, thank you so much for this program. God will bless you, ma'am. And uh, you know, when I miss your program, even at night, I go back to recording and I listen to it. You know, I wish I could contribute on the recording, you know, but it's always nice to listen to those to your recordings. God bless you. Thank you so much, Nareb. Nice to talk to you, and uh, hopefully, we'll be able to talk to you again. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, comrade. We, that's encouraging. And just to add on, before my SG comes, I just want to say, you people, you are not PF, you are not UPND, but guess what? You represent 15 million Zambians. That's right. Because that's the right. PF and the UPND, even if they are making so much noise, they are less than what? 20% of the Zambian population? Yeah. 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 For me, my my you know my vision as Ubuntu, when I think of the new Zambia, I think of the 15 million people. We don't even need PF and UPND when we start campaigning as Ubuntu. Because we, there are 15 million people there. Out of the 15 million, 10 million are eligible voters. People are 10, 16 years every day. So we don't need this PF and UPND. They are 15. 15 million people out there. So people like my Honorable SG there, Munia Zulu, you are representing the 15 million people who are quiet. But the PF and UPND, they think they are majority of Zambia. No, they are nothing. When we able to reach to all the communities, all the, the corners of Zambia where the 15 million people are, this UPND will be landslide. Now, as we are talking, their 2.8 is probably less than a million. So it's when you when you when I see it in my head, it's actually like wow, you know. This yeah, they still, they still boast to say history. they still both to say they are still they are now more than 2.8. Maybe they're five. They, but you what know what? There are 15 but, million people out there who never voted, and me, that is my target. That is where, where people like Munia come from. Honorable JJ Banda, they are representing that 15 million. Honorable G even Katuta, you know, all those independent MPs. So, yeah. so they don't know what they are up against. Right now they can talk, they are in government, they think they have everything going, but there are 15 million people out there. And when we bring those 15 million to vote, it's over. Because that is all, all, just 10 million votes we are talking. Mm -hmm. So that is my vision, right? Jim yes. This is what I, yes. yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm not I worried am. about PF and UPND because they are finished. Yeah. And you can close, honorable. Yeah, uh, uh, thank you, Your Excellency, and uh, Your Excellency as your SG. Uh, I'm praying that um, um, Zambians, they should put our country in prayers. Yes. Because what is the, I'm a researcher, and what I've researched, why all those voices have been sent away, those you are mentioning. Christopher Gangombe's voice is out of parliament. Binwa Mpundu's voice is out of parliament. Munia Zuru is out of parliament. JJ Banda is out of parliament. And these voices are the ones who are supposed even to defend. Because even in Lusaka, there was a stripping uh, club. Strip club, yes. Strip club which was about to be open, but go there now, they tend that stripping club, it's a nightclub, but you need to pay, but now those girls, they just dance on the floor with my mini skirt. So now, they will uh, at least reduce it, because the stripping club is supposed to be naked, but now they have given them that mamini skirt. When you you pay on the entrance, when you enter that nightclub, you find that there are girls who have been employed more than 30 there on the stage with it mamin. It's happening in Lusaka at Long Acres. I was doing the research.
I went in that bar. I paid the money in that bar. I entered. I saw what is happening. So all those things are not good. Because where is our culture going? Where is our Christianity values? So uh, I can just tell the Zambian people to say, this time around, and it's rain season, rain season has started here in Petauke. We Even this evening, as I'm talking right now, uh, we are, um, at least we are receiving the rains. So I can assure you to say, we need to hold each other. That's why for us, we said this suspension, it's nothing. I even said it to say, Madam Speaker, you can even make it one year. Because I know to say, my, I was voted to represent the people, not to go and draw an allowance at Parliament. Yes. Because if I was campaigning and then I was telling the people to say, vote for me, I go and make allowance, I don't think people were going to vote for me. No. Yes. No. So me, they voted for me to talk on their behalf, and yes. who will be talking. To and change even on this, lives. yes. And even on this folder, every time we are you are live, as your SG, I'll be joining. Hey! <laughs> it's over. Ten zero. <laughs> 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 oh my god that is good news that is good news yeah. you know yeah. i receive everything you have said about prayer god, god sees in the spirit and god is going to protect zambia zambia is a christian name a christian Amen. country and no weapon formed against zambia will prosper if they are going to use the parliament to harm Zambians, it will backfire. It will backfire. Amen. Fire, Holy Ghost, fire, return to sender. Nothing will Amen. be imposed by by any selfish person. It will because yes. you receive the briefcase. You want to impose things which would be detriment to our people. How dare you open a strip club in Lusaka? This topic we need yeah. to talk about it. It is a shame. Yeah. Is any minister's daughter dancing there in the club? No. Your no. ministers, your daughters are in schools overseas where is some leader. Abroad, they are abroad. Yes. Yes. You ministers, your daughters are overseas again getting educated. You are exposing our children to being prostitutes. Must strip club whole from Ushana, they take them and go sleep with them. And then expose them to social diseases it is a shame on you shame on you by hh for this to happen under your nose under your watch by hh really it is so shameful and this is what you must be telling villagers who come to come to peta uk i'm an from the city at where i'm going to town by i'm going to share because they have no jobs for them Apart from prostitution to survive, it's a shame. And we'll be here, we'll be talking. Thank you, Waila. We'll try to come early. Are you available tomorrow or when? I can follow your schedule because you honorable, you are the one who's on the ground. So let's exchange numbers and you can inbox me your number so that we can be coordinating topics and the time. Since you have said you'll be here, yeah, we'll talk behind the scene but what about tomorrow tomorrow or saturday when is the can we do the next program even even uh, tomorrow we can have the program it's um we can have you can just tell me the time then that's all okay so we do it at 21 hours your time tomorrow no problem okay. it's fine so we'll be here we'll be here 21 hours sharp my lord thank you so much god bless you let us be prayerful and we come against all forces of evil upon the Zambian children. Thank you. God, God will deal with you. I am a little under, but you will say, Tete Kwangala, Lesa Leumpa. Me, I like I work here and everything I'm doing here, 
is a sacrifice. Nobody pays me. Yeah. Nobody pays me, but I spend hours and hours talking, educating people, you know. But, but you know what? Because for the love of Zambia, once we can't be Baturie more. Some of us have to be like those countries who are making their, the changing lives of their people. And yeah, join want to join us. Let us change Zambia. Zambia, we are rich. Rwanda, yeah, Zambia, sure, there is nothing in Rwanda. Tanzania, But now, Tanzania yeah. economy is doing better than Zambia economy. Ah, I'm wondering. Yeah. Anyway, we'll be here tomorrow. 21 hours sharp. We have added a new member of the panel. I'll change the name from women to team. <laughs> we want to team. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, my SG. And uh, have a good night. Greetings to my grandchildren and uh, the family, my in-laws and everybody. Thank you so much, everybody. Love you and God bless. Thank you, Zane. Thank you. I see you, Mama Judy. I see you. And thank you, everyone. Thank you. God bless. Thank you.